Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, the sequel to 1988's comedy classic Beetlejuice from director Tim Burton, is out in theaters this weekend. Was this one worth the wait, or should it have stayed in the lobby of the dead? I'm going to let you know right after this. <laughs> Hey everyone and welcome to this non-spoiler review for Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, the sequel that is out in theaters this weekend to 1988's Beetlejuice, one of my favorite films ever. My reaction video to that film should be coming up very soon here on the channel. This one sees Tim Burton back to direct this sequel and Michael Keaton coming back to play Beetlejuice, Winona Ryder back as Lydia Dietz and Catherine O'Hara back as Delia Dietz, and we've got a host of new actors coming in uh, with new characters to be part of this world. Jenna Ortega leading the way, of course, as Astrid Dietz. That's Lydia's daughter here. You have Justin Thoreau, Willem Dafoe, Monica Belushi, and Arthur Conti. Those are pretty much the main actors that you see throughout the whole movie. So what are my overall thoughts on this? What I'm going to tell you in just a second, but first I'll remind you all to please subscribe to the channel down below and hit that bell button. And if you haven't subscribed to the Patreon, head on over there to support all we do here on the Outlaw Nation channel, patreon.com slash John Roca. All right, overall thoughts on the film. Here's what I'll tell you. I like the film. I didn't love the film. It's not as good as the classic 1988 film. It gets a bit overstuffed there, especially in the middle. When you're following all these different storylines, it becomes way too complex. I think they overthought the script way too much. Instead of streamlining it and making it really simple, they try to do too much just so you can see all of these characters doing the things that they're doing in their subplots that take away, honestly, from the main overall storyline of the movie. That being said, I do enjoy being back in this world. Tim Burton is letting his freak flag fly in a way that we haven't seen in quite some time. It doesn't all work, but it's certainly a lot of fun to watch a creative genius get back to his roots and do the things that he does and create the imagery and the feelings and the vibes that you want to see from someone as incredibly talented as Tim Burton. And there are a lot of funny moments in the movie. It wasn't like I was bored or wasn't entertained. Certainly, I enjoyed a majority of the time that it was in the theater. I did enjoy a lot of the moments with Michael Keaton, who hasn't missed a beat as Beetlejuice. In fact, by the end of the movie, I wanted more. If people forget the first movie, he wasn't in it that much. Go and clock how much screen time Michael Keaton has as Beetlejuice in that movie. He does a lot with a little, and I think the same thing here, except I even wanted more to see more of him in this movie. Winona Ryder hasn't missed a beat either as Lydia Dietz. I think some of you are going to like what they did with her, and some of you are going to be really upset with what they did with her. So it's going to be divisive, the choices they made with Lydia Dietz and what she's going through. It's essentially a crisis of confidence. She's kind of lost her way a little bit. She had a relationship that didn't work out or for a number of reasons. I don't want to spoil anything. And she's got her daughter here in Astro Dietz here that Jen Ortega plays. And she's trying to navigate her world again after a tragedy, which I think most of you have guessed. And Delia Dietz, Catherine O'Hara, back in, his, in her life. And Catherine O'Hara is fantastic. I mean, she's next level now. I mean, honestly, I've been watching her since the 1980s. She is so confident and strong and relaxed as an actress. It is a wonder to watch her own the scenes that she's in in this movie. And the power dynamic shifts from the original Beetlejuice to this Beetlejuice in their relationship, which I think is fun. Jenna Ortega is fantastic, really sweet, strong, a different version of the Lydia Dietz character that we saw in the first movie, because of course she's meant to simulate that uh, similar relationship that uh, Lydia had with Delia. So we see this with her character of Astrid and what she's going through. She clearly has issues with her mom, thinks her mom is spending too much time doing what she's doing and not enough time on her. So standard stuff that you see in a relationships, plus there's stuff that she's navigating with another parent as well. And her relationship with Arthur Conti's Jeremy is a fun little bright spot in the movie uh, as it goes along. Justin Thoreau, he acquits himself fine, but I'm always in and out with Justin. And the character doesn't help. I, I think Rory is really a a phenomenally unnecessary character in this movie. It feels a little shoved in to create strife or drama, and it's a little frustrating for me on that end. Willem Dafoe is great as Wolf Jackson. Did we even need that storyline? I have to say that we don't, but I liked him in the role. He's so much fun. The way he delivers the lines, all these things are a real joy to experience with Willem, who still has it, still has that energy and that spark, and you love to see it in the film. Now, as for Monica Bellucci's character, Dolores, she's playing the ex-wife of Beetlejuice, as you saw in the trailer, and she's certainly going after him to try to uh, repair what happened there. And uh, the, the sequence where you find out how they came to be as a couple, I think is one of the most intelligent and brilliant moments of the movie, showing Tim Burton taking an out-of-the-box chance 
with telling this story that I thought worked so well, especially for those of you who are massive horror fans. The clip is out there on YouTube for y'all to watch if you want to watch it ahead of time. But if you don't, you're going to enjoy it in the movie when it pops up. But do I think it was necessary? I have to say, again, I don't. And so this is where I'm getting to is that there's a lot of these extra storylines that were so unnecessary when the main storyline is pretty simple. A daughter's have an issue with her mom. Her mom is dealing with issues with her grandmother because there's been a tragedy. How are they all navigating all of this as they have to put up the house for sale? They have to go back and revisit these memories. You've got people who've got other agendas going on around them. And they show about three generations of women repairing their relationships and trying to fight off and work with this demon energy in Beetlejuice. Pretty simple storyline. But there's all this extra stuff that goes on that I guess Tim Burton used as an excuse to show what he can do as a director, which I commended, it for, commended him for earlier. I just wish these storylines were stronger and a bit more entertaining throughout the whole movie. That being said, as I said, there's some great funny moments, fantastic production design, fantastic costumes, um, and a real joy throughout the movie that these these actors are having that radiates off of the screen. And that's what keeps you entertained is you're like, okay, that seems a bit weird. Logically, does that make any sense? No, but look, they're having such a good time and I'm feeling that energy, so I'm going along with it. And I think that's essentially how I feel about Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. It's a fine film, but you're going to enjoy yourself if you're a fan of Beetlejuice. And if you're a Tim Burton fan, this one is absolutely going to scratch your itch because you're going to get to see the work of Tim Burton throughout. So I give it three cowboy hats out of five cowboy hats. I'll be kind and generous on this. It wasn't like I wasn't entertained, but there were certain things that just kind of got on my nerves a little bit storyline-wise and logic-wise that kind of kept me from really loving the film fully. And there's an end sequence that I think drags on for way too long. Well, if you go see it this weekend, let me know what you thought about Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice down in the comment section below. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Did it work for you? Did it not work for you? Did you feel the magic again with Michael Keaton, who kicks all kinds of ass throughout the whole movie? Or, or do you feel like me that it was a bit overstuffed and you didn't understand the logic of all these extra storylines when really it's a pretty simple storyline, just like the first movie, we could have just gone down that road and knocked it out of the park as well. Let me know down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching this non-spoiler review and I'll talk to you next time with another review here on the Outlaw Nation. Thanks so much for watching this video. Please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe for more content from the Outlaw Nation.